uh, these events this will be updated as we go on the Google Sheets with the link below. All right, so far to the layer program. Let's dive into the impact chain. So first of all, I would like you guys to just uh, think about what is what has been really an impact of one of the activities of your green office or maybe another green office that you know about and just just take a minute and just re reflect for yourself what what is what do you consider as really impact of one of your activities and um, after thinking about that for a moment please uh, post that into the chat window and we'll just have a quick look how you guys are defining impact or if you have some examples of that Okay, so if you have any idea of uh, what impact um, any of your activities have generated, can you please just drop them in the chat window and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so we have one here from Got a few coming in. It's nice. So tangible changes at the university in Utrecht, more vegan options in the canteen, lowered screen brightness, um, change in, uh, in Wachening here, change in catering practice at Wachening University, um, meatless Mondays, small changes in behavior, people bring in their own cups, for instance. Okay. okay. And then Neela wants to be the presenter here. I'm not sure what exactly she has to contribute there. But if Neela wants to say something, then you can unlock her to, to share some of her experience. You can, you can just uh, yourself, 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 the microphone. Okay, otherwise we're just going to share some of the other things. The workshop, how to change behavior, it made our office aware of the issues of change. Okay, and changes to catering, order system, sustainable lunches available, less tangible, change in discourse, or being more receptive for change, more recycling bins, or catering and packaging has changed building a community around sustainable development at the University of Utrecht. Student projects supported by the Green Office Food Sharing Initiative where leftover food is picked up from various suppliers and made available for students to pick up from a room at the university. Okay. All right, so maybe that's, that's good enough for now. And um, Maybe the unmuting didn't didn't seem to work, or Nina didn't have anything to say. After all, we can uh, still come back to that later. Um, so, before diving into what exactly the impact chain is, and some and going more into what you've been sharing right now, I just wanted to kind of get an idea of why are we actually talking about this. So, why, why is it interesting to why is it valuable to learn about the impact chain? So on the one hand, um, I've seen that a lot of times there seems to be a bit of conf confusion about what exactly do we mean with impact. And um, already the, what I've seen and what you've been written now, there's a different kind of levels in that. So we're just trying to get a bit more specific, a bit more concrete about what exactly we mean when we talk about impact. And um, it's also useful to just step back a little bit and see what is really the bigger 
the bigger picture, what are we really trying to achieve in terms of the systemic change that we want to achieve in the long run and not just the kind of shorter term impacts um, that might be a bit more um, tangible. And um, I'm also going to later, after going a bit into the into the model, share with you some of the benefits um, that I've seen uh, for our work and that I think why it's useful in terms of for the Green Office work and um, also for the Green Office movement. I'll get more into that in just a bit after explaining the framework. And I also wanted to just point out that I think this is a really useful tool also for your own personal careers in the future because this, uh, if you're able to really think and uh, understand, think in terms of and understand this impact logic and apply it to um, your future efforts as a social entrepreneur or if you want to work with an NGO, uh, this impact logic has been used in development work by NGOs already for many years and it's been, it's more and more becoming part of the industry in, uh, in social enterprise. A lot of funders uh, see it as a requirement that you're able to um, use this logic in your reporting. Um, so I think it's not just useful for the work of the Green Office, but also yeah, for your personal future. Okay, so enough said on that. Let's have a look at um, what exactly do we mean with the impact chain. So before we talk about the specifics of the, of the impact chain, um, I think it's important to just get a bigger view in mind. So we, we, we should start really with first having a clear understanding of what exactly is the problem uh, that we're focusing on um, around which we want to um, make an intervention to have impact. Um, so if we're not really very clear on what exactly is the problem that we're working on, then the kind of impact that we want to generate is maybe also not so clear. Um, so if you have a look here on the left side of that picture, it's kind of how, how do we really frame um, and narrow down and what, what is the boundary around which we set uh, the problem that we want to tackle, where our contribution is really focused. Um, so we could say here that um, the problem as we see it in the current system is that universities are being are actually reproducing an unsustainable society through the um, the research and the education that is offered now that's a lot of unsustainable values and mindsets and um, ways of producing knowledge um, then having uh, the effect in society that um, economic way, ways of practicing in the economic in the economy neoliberal sort of structures or um, fragmented ways of doing research where there's um, knowledge is being very separate from practical use or between different disciplines that's all contributing to an unsustainable society or the operational um, energy use and so on that's all part of reproducing an unsustainable resource use and uh, reproducing um, negative impacts on well-being of nature and society so if that's what we see as the problem then uh, what is the vision here and um, so then it's important to first have a clear vision of what what is really the, the, the future system that you want to see in reality so for instance let's say that future system we want to see is that universities are um, really making major contributions to all aspects of sustainability transitions whether it's through their through the knowledge and the research um, or it's through the education and generating um, graduates that are having an uh, impact on all kinds of organizations and institutions um, and having a regenerative footprint where the energy use and the water use and the food provided is actually having a positive rather than just less of a negative impact. Um, so so if that's what we want to achieve, then okay, what is really necessary to get from that current system to that ideal future system? So that's why we start to look at the impact chain and um, try to also narrow down a bit what are really the specific pieces that we want to achieve um, for that vision to realize. So now I'm going to zoom into the middle part here of the impact chain in terms of the pathway towards achieving that vision. So yeah, the impact chain is really the foundation for achieving your vision. And um, maybe as I'm, as I'm going through this, also just 
keep in mind kind of what what comes up for you uh, in terms of um, what does that mean for you, what questions might you have around this, and just take a note of that while I'm going through this. And you can bring that up later on. So we want to start really here on on the right side. So what what is the impact that we want to create? What is the influence we have on the system? So we think it's important here to differentiate between the impact and the outcomes. And that's like one element that you see a lot of confusion around sometimes. So for instance, um, some of you have also mentioned that there's a kind of a cultural change that people are aware of um, of the need for sustainability. They start caring more about the topic. That's not really an impact yet. That, that would, in this framework, we define an outcome because that's an influence on your specific target group. So the target group would be um, staff members or students within the university. So it's really helpful to be quite specific here. What, what are the target groups and the subgroups and that, what are their characteristics and um, what changes of, of values and beliefs and behaviors do you want to achieve for them. And then see the Im impact as really what is then the influence that that is having on the system at large. So let's say the desired long-term organizational and societal changes for a specific population or location. So the, here are some of the things maybe you mentioned that there's a lower, lower CO2 um, footprint, lower energy use, um, less plastic use. Those are kind of organizational impacts um, that you can also quantify here in terms of the amount of plastic cups and so on. Um, but then, yeah, it also gets interesting the, the difference here between the organizational and the societal changes. So what is then the impact of the reduced plastic use on, on society? So I guess then that's where we also have to kind of set our boundaries and say, okay, what, what is it that really, really can... Um, can look at as part of our work. So when we talk about outcomes for specific target groups, this is really on the level of um, changes in awareness and attitudes and skills. So those are all the things that um, are happening in the minds of people. Well, they don't directly have anything to do with actual changes in behaviors yet. That's just in terms of people learning something, um, starting to care more about topics of sustainability, knowing about um, where to find other people that might be, um, that they can contact, um, understanding how the university works and what sustainability means in relationship to education, for instance. And only then, the next level here is the changes in behavior is that um, students actually start um, consuming more vegetarian options in demands or that they choose different study programs than they would have otherwise. So those are the influence you have on people's actually choosing and, be, and acting differently. And um, also the changes in terms of living or working conditions are then sort of because people start acting differently, what changes in, their, in the way they experience their environment or their life so that people, students for instance, have access to different career opportunities because they have um, looked into, they have engaged with different um, sustainability projects and they have gained a lot of experience around that. So that changes in their life condition um, in terms of having a different career prospect. Or for instance, staff members engaging in some of the activities you organize, uh, finding it much easier to find other collaborators or finding students who can work, who can help them work out certain um, challenges they're facing. And only then do we look at, okay, what actually are the activities, the services and products that are necessary for bringing about those outcomes. So you see this is the logic here is to really start first with what is the impact you want to see and then working yourself back sort of what are the um, changes in living conditions needed, what are the changes in behaviors for that to come about and what do need, people need to know and care about and be able to do for changing those behaviors. And then do we start looking at, okay, what, what do we have to do in order to bring about those changes? 
So here are the activities you carry out and um, the target groups that you reach and uh, the satisfaction among your target groups. So a lot of times the reporting that we do is, is mainly just about actually the outcome level. So sometimes people think that just because people are satisfied and that there's a lot of participants coming to your events and that there's um, projects are being implemented regularly that that's already an impact. But according to this logic that's just kind of getting started by reporting about what you're doing. I'm not really saying so much yet about what the influence of that is. And uh, then we were thinking about, okay, so in order to execute those activities necessary, um, what are the inputs we need for that in terms of human, financial, or material resources? And by the way, if you look at um, below here, the social impact navigator is the source for that. We're going to be sending that around later on as well. And that gives a lot more in-depth guides to how to actually apply this framework and um, also some really useful examples also for how to measure and um, create indicators around that. We'll say a, bit, a little bit more about that in just a bit. Um, so I just wanted to kind of walk through how we look at the green office impact chain just to kind of understand these different levels here in terms of your, your own context. So we think that the green office, um, the impact that the green office can have is, um, or that at least that we strive towards, is that universities become catalysts for societal sustainability transitions. So it's not just that the universities themselves are more green, and um, but that they really, in a societal context, make, a, make an active contribution towards more sustainable futures. And specifically through students and graduates um, transforming the institutions and communities where they live and work, during the studies, but also especially afterwards as they move into their careers. And um, that research informs and guides sustainability transition processes. So especially interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research that helps actors in municipalities or companies to really um, shift from dominant, uh, from the status quo or business as usual into more regenerative business models and um, governance uh, regimes. And of course, the positive operational footprint that actually regenerates our natural cap and social capital and not just reduces suffering and inequalities, but actually can help to um, contribute to social well-being and um, ecological biodiversity. So if, in order for that to happen, we need to engage uh, specifically the target groups of students, staff and faculty members. And um, what needs to change for them in terms of their uh, awareness and knowledge uh, is that they know more and are able and um, value sustainability issues and able to uh, tackle those issues um, in their studies uh, as well as in their work and in their life. And that they actually then make choices and uh, behaviors uh, as well as working more collaboratively with other students, with other staff to advance sustainability in their studies, in their work, and in their personal lives. So that's still quite a, quite a general level, of course, and um, in just a moment uh, I can show you some, some other sites where we break that down a little bit into individual portfolios, and you can then also break that down into individual projects as part of those portfolios. So this is just a kind of very general overview, and then um, it's also up to you to make that more context specific to your own organizational situation. So then the kind of activities uh, that the Green Office can do um, is a new kind of clustering that we are so um, um, based on how Utrecht was doing it and we think that this is some of the main uh, roles that the Green Office can take is in one hand informing about existing sustainability efforts and opportunities for, for improvement to raise the awareness part here and the knowledge, uh, but also doing lecture series and so on, and get, uh, increase the, the skill. Um, and then connecting students, staff, and faculty to build a change alliances. So it's really about bringing all these different target groups together um, and seeing the synergies that people can bring about uh, by working more collaboratively. And then also supporting 
the with the engagement opportunities, for instance, um, engaging a larger group of volunteers. Uh, so we're learning now um, how a green office can not just engage five or ten, but maybe even fifty or, or more in the long run, and um, assist with students or, or staff members in implementing project ideas and um, developing those projects to become more mature and long-lasting. And also to initiate projects, of course, that um, are not there yet and that where the Green Office sees gaps. Um, and then after developing those projects over time, maybe handing them over to, af to other uh, actors that they can also fulfill those activities so the Green Office can continue innovating and initiating new initiatives. So the inputs for that then are then kind of the Green Office principles in terms of the diverse team of students and staff, uh, the volunteers and project partners, the mandates and the legitimacy that's needed for um, some of the activities in the, in, this, in the target groups to actually want to work with you and um, the budget and office space that's needed for executing your activities and um, engaging your target groups and the learning culture and uh, the trainings to be able to actually implement those activities and tackle those challenges. Um, yeah, so now after having a, a, a general understanding of what the impact chain is, I um, can just have a quick look at what are some of the uses and benefits of this model. Um, so of course it can really help with prioritizing your activities uh, and when you have a clearer view of what exactly do you want to achieve and um, what activities are maybe actually nice to do and fun but they're not maybe actually really contributing towards the outcomes um, that you want to generate. So in that sense by having that more more worked out in more detail, then um, you can also maybe let go of some activities that are not so impactful and focus more on those things that can really, in the long term, have more of an impact. Um, this tool can really help you also to uh, to monitor your activities. So if you um, create some indicators around that, um, I'll say a bit more about that. And um, so keeping track of to what extent is what you're doing actually having the effects that you that you want and uh, reflecting on that over time and um, the, the impact chain is really something that you don't just work out once and you have it really well worked through through a whole weekend retreat or something then it's fixed forever but I really see it as a kind of living tool a living document maybe that you can come back keep coming back to uh, every few months with every new team and uh, always reflecting again okay what are we actually doing what are the things that are really useful and um, are these really the outcomes that we need to achieve or is it maybe something else? And uh, so then one, if you work out your activities in terms of this impact logic, it can also help you to uh, reflect and learn together with other green offices who have a similar impact chain or maybe who fill out the chain in a slightly different way. Uh, um, so yeah, it can also be a tool for learning within the green office movement. And can also help you to create more alignment within the team. If um, you have a kind of overall Green Office impact logic, so you can adapt the one that I just introduced and make it more specific to your context. Uh, and then encourage each of the portfolio coordinators to have a portfolio specific impact logic. And then that can be a tool for you to also see how does the how do the different activity domains in terms of research, operations, education and so on. What are the what is the, what are the common outcomes, the common impact logic that you're working on together, and that can also help you for your internal team knowledge transfer. If people are leaving the team, new people coming in, then by going into this impact chain, people get much quicker and much better sense of okay, what exactly is the green office all about. So it's also really useful as an external communication tool. So if you have this worked out in a nice way and you communicate this on your website or you can use it to introduce the Green Office model to other stakeholders, um, it can really help them to get a better view of what exactly you're trying to achieve and what you're doing and um, take you also more, legit more legitimate by um, having a clearer understanding of your activities and impacts and how you're also being quite rigorous um, about how to 
plan those um, strategically. And that, of course, can be helpful to access uh, resources. So if you include that in your reporting and uh, in uh, funding applications, um, and as I said, especially for social and enterprises, a lot of the funding um, instances are starting to ask really, um, do you have such an impact chain? Do you have it really filled out? Do you have data that you can actually show um, how and which impacts you're achieving? Um, and only then will you get those resources in the long run. And it can also be useful to facilitate collaborations with others because, of course, some of those longer term impacts are quite difficult to actually achieve and maybe you, it's actually not possible that only you uh, can achieve them. So it can also be a way of engaging others and say, okay, who else uh, is needed to bring about that impact? So maybe we can bring about some outcomes maybe for specific target groups, maybe other actors are needed to bring about other outcomes that are needed for the impact that we all want to see. So in this way you can bring together different student organizations that are maybe some of which are maybe focusing more on the educational part, others which are maybe focusing more on operational activities or food and so on. Um, then you can kind of also map out the synergies between the different actors. And then you can really become also a movement building tool um, because people see themselves more as connected as part of a similar theory of change where everybody has a piece to play. Yeah, so um, just looking at the time now, I think we have 25 minutes left. Um, so we might not gonna have time to go too deep into everything that we had planned. Uh, in terms of um, applying the impact chain, um, sorry if this slide is showing a bit, bit weird. So one is one is to really develop indicators to operationalize um, the logic a bit more. So it's just some some ideas here. I'm just going to put all these up. Um, so for instance, if you want to focus on the effects on uh, organizations through graduates, so the impact of um, students graduating and then transforming uh, businesses uh, or ministries, developing new business models and um, so on in those organizations, then what is, ne what is needed here um, and how can you develop indicators around that? So for instance, um, students need to be able to get access to sustainability related careers. So then you can try to develop some indicators around, okay, how many students are actually um, working at companies or organizations with um, sustainability focus. Maybe getting that data is something you can do with your career services department. Um, and then in order for students to get access to those uh, sustainability related careers, um, they need to want to choose uh, and they need to actually choose those uh, certain master programs or educational activities that give them the skills that are needed to access those careers. And in order to choose those um, programs, they have to be aware and they need to care and see the personal relevance of sustainability for their own studies and their jobs. So this is something maybe you can get at through uh, surveys and um, uh, focus group discussions. It's just an example. Here. And um, then if you look at the activities that you can organize for those outcomes, um, Think of the number of seminars that you carried out or um, other kind of educational activities, the kind of participants reached and the number of participants who, uh, who came to your activities and also the level of satisfaction of those participants. Um, you can get that through interviews or survey outcomes or just asking at the end of the activities to what extent people were satisfied. And um, yeah, indicators are also, of course, what, how much um, money is needed, um, how many people are working on those activities, um, what sort of resources are needed for that. And then if you have those indicators, it also helps you to evaluate over time. So, if, so this is the same content here, just some questions down here. So what is the relationship between your outputs and outcomes? are the things that we're doing actually bringing about those outcomes that we want here. So if you have those indicators, then that will be, help you to 
reflect better about, um, okay, are people actually more aware? Do they actually care more about sustainability as part of their studies and their jobs? Um, and if not, then maybe we have to think of what other, or what do we need to change in terms of the activities that we do? So, um, do we have to do more or less activities, or do we just have to frame them in a different way? Um, and maybe it means we need uh, actually, uh, if we want to do more of these activities, then maybe we need more resources as well. Um, maybe we need more people working on those activities, or maybe we need a higher budget from facility services, or a larger group, larger pool of volunteers. So do we have the sufficient and the right kind of inputs for delivering the required activities and outputs? Um, and maybe also using it as a reflection tool for evaluating, uh, okay, what's actually missing for people to get from the stage of awareness to the stage of behavior change? So maybe they care about sustainability as part of their study, um, but maybe they then don't really end up in sustainability jobs because what they actually care about is having a, a safe and um, reliable income. So maybe then another activity, if you realize that that's a barrier, maybe another activity can be showing people how they can access sustainability-related careers with a more safe and um, reliable income. Or, yeah, so just an example of reflecting more about what, what is really the, the underlying assumptions here between the different steps from the activities to outcomes to impact, and where might be some gaps or, um, or barriers in between. And yeah, that's why I'm saying coming back to this as a learning tool, as a re reflection tool um, over and over again can be really useful to evolve this impact logic over time. Um, yeah, so let me see. Here's just some uh, suggestions for if you want to collect data uh, for your, your outcomes. Um, we usually tend to start here in the bottom left uh, with kind of anecdotal evidence, so um, just from what people have told us after an event um, or what is, what is our own experience in facilitating activities, um, to maybe some case studies where we look at some of the activities that we organized and we um, look at them in more depth, so as a student, student research can be involved in that as well. Um, and here the, the axes are just that if you go and get more to the right side you have higher reliability of your statements and if you get up here in the y-axis it also requires much more time costs and ex expertise to actually do it well um, so for instance if you want to do focus group interviews or um, participatory observation by external experts standardized surveys and that requires a lot more time and um, expertise to do it properly so yeah you have to also balance of course what capacities you have and how much attention you can give to monitoring. Um, you also might want to ask yourself what kind of um, what kind of data do you need and how can you access it? So is it something that you can um, data you can obtain by uh, information or by asking questions? Maybe you can just design a survey around that. Other things you need to observe people in action. Um, to see if they actually change their behaviors because they don't, it's not enough to ask them. Um, and other times maybe you have to make, conduct an experiment and to test um, what happens when you don't have a certain intervention, when you don't have um, a certain campaign, what happens when you do have that campaign and compare the outcomes. And um, maybe you can access the data from certain documents, from the reporting of your university or other instances that you don't even need to generate that research yourself. Um, so we just had some examples here from different portfolios, so I won't go too deep into that here. Um, but again, I'll send around the slides and you can look at that in some more detail. Um, so the main point is here just really being clear about um, your target groups and what kind of um, outcomes they would have. Um, for instance, working better together, reaching more students, um, implementing projects with a higher quality, um, taking sustainability-focused internships and jobs, um, and then here's just a list of different kind of projects Green Office can do. 
Um, we have the same here for operations. And again, here's an, an example of breaking down your target groups more specifically into subgroups and seeing, okay, what needs to happen for each of these target groups uh, in terms of what do they need to know, what do they need to choose or decide uh, in order for your impacts to come down. Um, so I'll just skip those here and you can just have a look at those um, on your own time. Right, so um, just take a moment here and um, see if you've written down something as I was going through this. Um, if you have any questions or even if you have some experiences that you would like to share with others um, about how what has been particularly impactful for you or how you've been using this model before. So you can just take a moment to reflect for yourself and then write it in the chat window or if you would like to share with a group, just feel free to unmute yourself and then speak to us. Hi, I wanted to ask something. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was uh, like, all the through the presentation, I was thinking this is a very linear uh, system. And I was wondering, I don't know, like to me, between those different steps, there's so much can, that can happen. And that actually, you know, like it kind of assumes that uh, if you do specific things, you can change the behavior and then you will get an impact. But <laughs> I, I think it's a very nice way of kind of structuring your, your uh, uh, activities and thinking how you want to do it. But I have a problem with seeing, like, like it really can bring that much impact, like, um, that you, you can utilize it in this way. So I, I have a problem with the fact that it's so linear and that, it, you know, like, you go from one step to another and if you follow this Sure, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely a valid concern and um, if you really acknowledge the complexity of certain issues, then things don't happen in such a linear way. Um, um, I guess it's, it's it's just also a kind of thinking tool and trying to just see okay, what, are the, what, is, what are the underlying assumptions between what you're trying to achieve and uh, acknowledging that maybe not, uh, you cannot achieve all these things by your own and of course for some outcomes you need uh, other access to also be involved, um, different kind of activities that are um, contributing to the same outcome um, and also yeah, the feedbacks if, uh, if a certain outcome is achieved then that can also be a resource again for your inputs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really also, of course, acknowledging that there's different levels here. So some outputs might be impacts uh, for other activities, and um, um, so it's yeah. I see it more as like a, as a reflection tool and also a communication tool, and uh, just a, a way to to get a bit into get a bit clearer on what exactly you're trying to do and what can what are the things that you can measure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have any any other questions here? I don't see any questions in the chat yet. How Are there you... any people using it? The impact chain, you yourself, disability, or any other green office? Sorry, what was the first part of the question? Uh, if you know examples of organizations that use it, and if you use it yourself, or any, do you know about any green office that uses it? Um, well, I, I know that green office in Maastricht was just using it as for their, um, like I introduced it recently and you wanted to use it, uh, they wanted to use it for their team uh, retreat as a reflection tool for getting a clearer understanding of how, what exactly they 
they want to be doing and um, what are you doing currently. So you can also use it as a discussion tool on your team to think of, okay, what are we current doing so far in the last uh, year or so? Um, what are the main activities we've been doing? What are the outcomes that we think we've been generating through that? And what is it that we actually would like to do? Um, what is the ideal case, I was saying, and then seeing what, what are the gaps in between there. Um, and yeah, we can send around some uh, um, some links to organizations that are using the, using the impact chain. Um, so that will also help you to get a, some clearer examples maybe from other organizations. Yeah. Um, if you want me to jump in there, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm Matthew from Green Office Maastricht that uh, Jim was just mentioning. And while we haven't actually um, gone through the process um, somatically of using this tool, but we, we will be because we're doing sort of a, um, a re pivoting internally um, and a bit of a restructuring. And this is, well, I, I, we haven't used it yet, as I said, but I think this will be a really useful um, sort of heuristic tool in terms of now we step back and look at what the goal and the mission of the Green Office as a body um, itself is um, and then um, at the most abstract level and then distilling it down into really concrete um, activities that we should be doing but just as a, sort of almost like a reset button on the Green Office this tool is sort of it gives you a lens to do that I think. All right. Thanks for sharing that uh, experience from your side. And um, what, what's, yeah, maybe just a question about that. So, um, how do you think that this tool has uh, shaped your discussions around what the Green Office wants to do um, compared to just having a discussion around that without that kind of framework in mind? Uh, well, as I said, we haven't used it yet. I, we just, I, just introduced it to the team, um, but not all of our members were there the last time that we were talking about this. Um, right. But uh, yeah, it just gives us um, it, it just gives us a bit of structure in, in asking these sort of bigger questions, uh, and because we're also looking at how our roles are going to be set within the green office, um, so this is really yeah just a tool to help us do that in a more systematic way. Any of the others? I know maybe uh, in Utrecht, have you uh, come across this model before or have you thought about using it in some way? Then you guys are still muted. Okay. Oh shit, sorry. You, wanna hear what, you can hear what I'm saying anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I'm Emily from Green Office Utrecht, for those of you who don't know me. Um, we've kind of used this tool, I guess, a little bit in the workshops that we've done with Rootability in the past. Um, and we don't really use it like structurally as part of our green office organization, but I guess we kind of informally ask ourselves these questions all the time. Um, we're very conscious of making sure that the message is always clear in all the things that we're trying to do, and that's something that um, we're constantly kind of reminding each other in the team to do to make sure we have our message straight and I think that really starts with the impact that we want to create um, like just taking the step back and saying okay um, what wait hold on why are we doing this what's the what's the outcome but then what is the bigger impact itself so we really want to make sure every time we're putting ourselves in front of our community or inviting our community to do something that we have a very clear and structured um, story to tell them about why we're doing it and what the bigger picture really is. I think we kind of use it informally in that way. And it's really helpful, actually. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you find it useful. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, each time um, I'm organizing an activity or doing something, I just keep in the back of my mind, is this actually contributing to the community we want to create and the impact we want to put out there. So it's something uh, like an evaluation tool I use before I actually start up an event or do something. Yeah. 
Yeah. by impact on, uh, on my own awareness uh, like when I got first introduced to the impact chain logic um, uh, around two years ago it's just been there in the back of my mind ever since kind of thing so it's it's really like planted a seed in my consciousness and I was always looking at uh, okay what are we actually doing here and always kind of being more critical about the things that we think we're up to um, and the seeing kind of more the longer term changes that we're working towards and uh, it also kind of I think helped me to reflect a bit on the green office model in terms of what is the, the impact that we are really trying to work on and so we had this kind of discussions also at the summit that we see maybe two different slightly different impact logics um, so one is the more focus on the university and um, the, the green office is supporting university to become more sustainable in all its aspects and all its domains and the other one is then uh, so the, the green office is then more of an organizational change catalyst uh, and the other the one is my, seeing also the Green Office more as an educational program and then um, reflecting on what are the impacts and the outcomes of the Green Office in terms of educating the people who are working in the Green Office and maybe also the volunteers to have this change maker experience and to be motivated and committed to continuing doing this kind of work as you leave uh, the university and start working at other companies or employers. Um, so also seeing kind of what, what other activities would we need to start doing to further support that logic as well and not just focus on the organizational change logic. Um, so that's also kind of where the, the, the alumni network idea was partially related to that. So seeing kind of how can we provide continued support for Green Office alumni to, to uh, um, take that experience of the, of the Green Office further into their, into their careers and support each other across organizational contexts. Um, yeah, any other reflections on that before we, before we close? Then I would just, um, yeah, I'm done, you have something? Yeah, I just want to, yeah, one, if, if we're done, just two uh, uh, small administrative things still. Uh, so uh, one so thing I just want to just mention, so we're recording, could you maybe turn up the speaker? <laughs> Hello? Okay. Um, so one thing is just that uh, we recorded this, this webinar and uh, we should, probably should have asked in the beginning. I uh, just want to check if, if anyone has an issue with uh, this being uploaded uh, with kind of your questions and, and all of that in it. Uh, so just let me know if, if anyone has a concern about that. Um, yeah, and then apart from that, uh, yeah, we'll send around the, the slides of course um, and then on the 10th of May, there's a, a next webinar on the Green Office model, uh, which if you've been in the Green Office for a while already is maybe, uh, yeah, you already maybe know a lot of this stuff. Uh, but if you have new people in your Green Office, uh, it might be quite useful for them to join. Um, so you can suggest that to them. And, uh, and then we have the next, yeah, kind of proper uh, Lea webinar. Then, as Tim already mentioned in the beginning, on the on the twenty third, uh, on student staff engagement, uh, which is, will be given by by Femke, which will be uh, quite nice, I think. Yeah. All right. So maybe just to um, as a final remarks from my side. I just had myself a meet there. Uh, so as a kind of final remark, if you want to continue working with the impact chain, I do encourage you to have a discussion around it together with the whole team of sort of what's the overall logic of the Green Office in your case and um, to encourage the different team members also to think of uh, how to apply it to the different portfolios and um, potentially also to the individual projects but I think it makes more sense on a portfolio level um, than see the different projects as just the activities that are part of those, part of that portfolio. And so you can also refer to the slides that we'll be sending around. That's sort of inspiration there. Um, any other suggestions here? Yeah, it can also be used for reporting. So uh, if you make like a, a one-page or two-page report where you just have all your activities and sort of the main outcomes that you were aiming for, and if you have data for that as well, 
with some kind of key figures that can be a really nice device. You just have that on the one page rather than like a whole in-depth report. Um, using that structure. Um, and if you want to get more into it, then you can also see if you can uh, get some students to do research about uh, what are the different outcomes for some of your projects. Um, so if you want to get more into the monitoring, then maybe a student research project can actually help you in um, setting up some indicators and um, also um, tracking those indicators. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's it from, from our side. Um, yeah, it's one one thirty now, so exactly one hour. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the webinar today. I hope it was uh, useful in some way. And um, um, please feel free to forward the recording to your to your teammates. I'm uh, looking forward to hear about any um, any outcomes from this discussion. So if you have any things to share about um, what came up from the discussions you had with your team or how you're continuing to use the impact uh, logic, feel free to just make a post on the, on the Facebook page um, or use the platform that will be coming up soon. All right, and then hopefully see you all soon in, the, in Amsterdam on Saturday or otherwise at another occasion. Okay, bye everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Then. Thank you.